All right, everybody. thank you so much for joining. My name is Tom Nickel. I'm in product marketing here at HackerRank. I'm joined by my colleague from Solutions Engineering, Chris Bronicor. And so we're going to talk to you about a pseudo rank. We're going to show you how you can use pseudo rank to source screen interview and hire the best Linux talents. Uh, mentioned, my name is Tom Nickel in product marketing. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the great industry challenges with tech recruiting. Then I'm going to talk a little about Hacker Rank for Work Salt, some of those challenges. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about some very specific um, tech roles uh, with managing your data center. After that, uh, my colleague Chris, uh, a solution engineer, he's going to take over and talk to you a little bit about pseudo rank, give you technical specs, give you a live uh, walkthrough and demonstration, and a wrap up and QA session afterwards. So, thank you for joining. Uh, look into a great web webinar. So let's dive in. Uh, as, you'll met, as you'll notice throughout this presentation, I actually like to mix in quotes uh, that aren't necessarily like hackering, but, but that apply to the industry. Uh, the one I read um, pretty recently, it's by Lily Whittycomb, uh, the New Yorker, and she said, the world is being rebuilt in code. Hiring computer engineers used to be the province of tech companies, but these days, every business from fashion to finance is a tech company. And for those of you on the phone who are in tech recruiting, I think it resonates pretty strongly with you as, as well as it does with us, and it's true. Um, and I've got some examples to show that, you know, it really doesn't matter what your business does anymore, everyone needs strong tech talent. Really great examples of that um, and how, how otherwise bigger uh, market leaders are being slightly disrupted by this shift. Um, one is with Airbnb. Um, so Airbnb. Um, they forced market leaders like Hilton to really upgrade their technology stack. Airbnb came along with a SaaS website, a great mobile app, uh, really challenged Hilton's market share uh, in like the you know hotel room rental space. And Hilton had to really play a lot of catch up to get their website and their mobile app up to snuff. Another really cool example that I like to use for uh, technology nation is actually the Walt Disney Company. Usually Usually, when we think about the Walt Disney Company, we think about Disneyland or Disney World, and we think about theme parks and movies like Snow White and Cinderella. Uh, Disney is actually spending a tremendous amount of time and money, $1 billion with a B, in fact, on the Magic Plus initiative. Uh, and this is what basically got rolled out at Walt Disney World in Florida, where um, customers at their parks get the Magic Bands, which are RFID bands that kind of track what you do and get you access to your hotel rooms and Rise and FastPass and things like that. And the MyMagic Plus app is their mobile app solution. On top of that, they've actually implemented free Wi-Fi for all of their parks in Disney World in Florida as well. So, you know, why would Disney spend a billion dollars on things like that? Obviously, because they feel like even though this technology was expensive, it's going to pay dividends. It's ultimately going to um, um, revenue in the future by having their customers spend more. So other cool examples of how technology is also helping shift um, business. Walmart's another good example. They're seeing their sales grow quite a bit through their mobile app. Uh, Calgary is just one example of cities all across the globe that are building their own mobile apps and mobile websites. Uh, and The Honest Company by Jessica Alba. It's on track to be a billion dollar company and a lot of that, a huge part of that is through what they've done via social media, their website, their app. So these are five really awesome examples of how technology is seeing how companies used to think about their business. Technology is now a part of every business, no matter what you do or how technical or non-technical your products may be. So this is news. Everyone needs technology and tech talent, um, but to some degree it's also bad news. And the reason it's kind of bad news is because we have about 1.2 million open tech jobs by 2018. That's all jobs that need to be filled. And that's kind of bad news is because it, spent, it costs on average $20,000 per new hire. Uh, the reason for that is because only about one offer is made for every roughly 30 tech candidates. That means as tech recruiters and hiring managers, you're spending your time you know, sifting through resumes and pre-screening and interviewing like up to 30 people before you actually find that awesome candidate. This is a big problem with tech recruiting. And I would have an even bigger problem with Linux, which is why we've all joined today to see how we can improve how you do these things for Linux. So to sum up all of that in another tech leader's words, Mark Andreessen, he's from Mark Andreessen, or Andreessen Horowitz Venture Capital, 
Um, our company is dying for talent, and you can read the rest of the, your quote at your leisure, but it's definitely true. Even in the Silicon Valley, even the hub of technology, everyone is struggling to hire top technology talent. The market is huge, but the pool is small, and the pool of truly qualified candidates is smaller, and finding those truly qualified candidates is what's sucking up all of your time as tech recruiters and hiring managers. The biggest challenges that you're probably seeing right now are sourcing, um, building a, a funnel of talented tech professionals, screen, identifying who the best candidate for those interviews are, interviewing them, uh, uh, effective assessing those candidates' skills during the interview, and then ultimately hiring them, creating a, a, an effective enough package that makes them want to join your team. So these are four challenges that Packer Rank uh, has tried to focus on. And so before we jump to Studio Rank, I think it's important that we kind of understand how Packer Rank for work actually uh, funds first, uh, and I promise we'll get to the Linux part of the presentation very soon. But I think this context will help you for when Chris talks about PseudoRank and what it does. So for particular challenges, HackerRank approaches them all a little bit differently. On the screen and screening side, we have what we call code sprints. A code sprint is basically a hackathon for programming. It's on site or it's online, where hundreds or thousands of programmers come along to take the same set of code challenges. Um, and basically get auto-scored on a global leaderboard. So this is a great way to have hundreds of thousands of potential tech candidates come to you and screen themselves for your organization. And it, everyone has career pages. Everyone posts stuff on their career pages. So what we also offer is what we call public-facing code challenges. And this is basically a problem that any candidate can come solve with code. So they'll come to your career page and they'll complete a code challenge and then that score will automatically get forwarded to you as a tech recruiter. So basically, this candidate's already done like a fit their job for you. They implement their interest in this position, and they've completed a code challenge, so you can pre-screen them before you ever talk to them on the phone, raise them via email. So two very powerful tools there for sourcing and screening. On the screening and interviewing side, we have code screens, and this is basically where you um, merge together three or four specific code challenges that you pick or built, um, and you screen a specific candidate in these three or four code challenges, and then another kind of comprehensive score on how they did on these particular code challenges. This is a really great way to if this person is a, a, a good fit for your specific role. You can use built-in code challenges, or you can build your own, which means you can really fine-tune exactly for what you're looking for. Finally, on the interview and hiring side of things, we have a code pair. Compare is where you combine a code challenge with a live video interview. So if the flying candidates out to you to watch them code in person, you can save a whole lot of money on time and travel expense by doing this via the web, but you obviously want to see how they code. So we combine the video components, you can interact with your candidate, and then that with the code challenge so you can see exactly what their code skill aptitude is. So kind of like the foundation of what the Hacker Rank for Work platform does. And it's going to just be helpful when Chris starts talking about what PseudoRank does specifically. For those who already know what Hacker Rank does, I apologize. Um, we're getting to the PseudoRank really soon. A few quick stats on Hacker Rank, and we feel that these numbers are important so you kind of have an idea of how PseudoRank and Hacker Rank can be successful at your organization. We have up to a million developers currently using the Hacker Rank platform. We support 33 different languages. We have 45,000 build challenges. A thousand companies and 250 universities are using us. And when we pulled all of these customers, they said that on average, as tech recruiters, they're saying about 70 to 80 hours of their time per hire. So as tech recruiters, I imagine you know every minute counts. Every minute you say there's another minute you can go to fill in another role or another great tech recruiting initiative. So imagine what you could do with 70 to 80 hours of your time saved per hire as the benefit that HackerRank is going to offer you. There's a lot of time talking about kind of like coding challenges and programmers, um, but there's kind of another aspect of um, talent and over technology that kind of gets overlooked in a lot of ways. So think of your data center. Um, every one of you who's attending this webinar right now, ultimately your company has a data center. Whether it's on, on premises with you, whether it's in the cloud, regardless, you probably have websites and you have storefronts, you have mobile apps, you have any databases, some QA tools, you have all these things that live and breathe in your data center. Undoubtedly, you all use some combination of these particular tools. 
Um, a lot of these things are run by Linux. It's whether or not you know C++ or Java for the data center. It's whether or not you know Linux and networking and things like that. So, you know, it kind of went out for us at HackerRank maybe like six or seven months ago, and we said this is a target we really need to, uh, you know, this is a target we really have to go after. Let's make our HackerRank for work platform even more robust. You know, and in terms of Linux hiring, you really all relate to this. 97% of survey hiring managers are looking to bring on more Linux in the next six months. That's from the 2015 Linux Ops report that literally just came out about a week ago. Uh, but as you already know with tech hiring, this is, you know, easier said than done because there's not a huge pool of tech candidates, let alone candidates that really know Linux scripting. And those that do, half of them don't know enough Linux scripting. So it takes even longer to screen and interview candidates see what their actual Linux skill level is. So, um, that's basically, oh, sorry, I have a quote. Um, and so this kind of sums up what I've been talking about, right? Jeff Hayden of Inc. Magazine, hiring the right people is critical for any business. We all know that. Not because the right people will help drive business, but also because the wrong people will put you on the wrong track. Drag everyone else down, and they'll slow down all of your projects, and then you have to hire someone else. So you lose three, six, nine, twelve, however many months you lost with that or hire. So it's even more crucial for your data center, which has to run 24-7. Similarly, it's even more critical to sure you bring on the right uh, people with the right skills. And ultimately, uh, Rank decided to launch its pseudo rank platform. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this on to Chris, our solutions engineer. Um, thank you for uh, letting me take you through kind of like the industry challenges and how HackerRank is aiming to solve those. Now, Chris is going to show you a lot more detail on PseudoRank. Okay, hey, thanks, Tom. Uh, this is Chris. So let's uh, let me talk a little bit about PseudoRank, and then I'll go right into a live demo. Really, I've, I've looked at resumes and I've seen you know someone put Linux on their resume, and I'm like, what does that really mean, right? Did they did they install Ubuntu for five minutes and maybe start a Chrome or something on it, or do they actually know how to you know, data center or do uh, desk or system admin tasks. So PseudoRank is really going to allow you to evaluate the candidate skills that you're getting before you're making the hire, right? So what it lets you do is, is spin the server and then this, spin up this environment where candidates can actually log in, uh, scripting challenges that you decide, and these can be completely custom based on the jobs you're hiring for. And likely, you know, these tasks are going to be fresh, right? So they're not, they're, the candidate's going to be on their feet. You're going to see how they respond different scenarios to um, be able to pick and choose from candidates based on how they did on those scenarios and you can have automatic grading um, tasks and be able to rank your candidate pool and be able to quickly identify who the candidates are that actually know Linux skills for those that maybe just installed Linux and say, yeah, I'm putting it on my resume. Uh, so this is going to give you objective criteria to help accelerate those top candidates through your pipeline so you can make a hire uh, more quickly and also make a better hire. So let's go over to the platform. So uh, we have a simple web login. So if I logged in as a recruiter, um, simple. So you get your credentials, you log in, and you get taken to this dashboard. So I have, as Tom mentioned before, uh, covers the list, but also covers you know the 33 other languages that we talked about. So, so in this board, you have all your tests. So your team here can actually create, or engineers as well, can create and administer these tests of your new candidate. So the engineering team could essentially create a test either from library questions or create their own, and my candidates take that challenge and then have them stack ranked. And I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. Um, but first, I want to since this focus is really on Linux, I'm going to focus on the Linux challenges. So I already have one created, and it's pseudo rank challenge. So this is essentially a test uh, that we've created. And once you create the test once, you can reuse it over and over and over again for any number of candidates. Uh, let me show you what this looks like from the candidate perspective and what it, goes, what it looks like from more of an administrative standpoint. So we already have this test uh, set up and good to go. So what we can do is actually in hand to take a challenge. They'll receive a link that looks something like this. Uh, I do want to mention this page is completely brandable to your company, right? So, you know, if I were Company, I could put my company logo here. I could have my messaging in the instructions, you know, maybe describing what the test is about. 
collect the information that I want to collect. So let's say I'm looking for a DevOps position. Maybe I'm looking at new hires. I could essentially ask for um, new hire information in a platform. And uh, give me a second. So depending on the type of position that you're hiring for, what you can actually do is change the settings on the test. You can actually, I can collect college GPA, I can collect resume, and every candidate that completes a challenge will generate a report for your team to inspect, and it will have all the information here so you can compare candidates on objective criteria based on how they did on the assessment. So that's into this page. And what I can do is I, I go to the, this main question, right? So I can launch the server. Um, launching this should take, you know, either like a couple minutes or so. Um, I'll go back and, and show you what's actually going to be in this test from an admin perspective. So you essentially define a, a problem statement, right? And in this problem statement, you can give the candidate say, hey, this is going to be a server task. It's going to start up in your own, like its own isolated server, like a kind of a sandbox that the candidate can get through these challenges in. And what's cool is that you can actually um, set up these sandboxes however you want. So what's really flexible is that you can install tools from the internet, like if you're hiring for a DevOps position, so if you're familiar with Chef or, or Puppet, um, you could actually install these tools ahead of time. So as the server is booting up, uh, those tools installed so the candidate can be up and ready, ready to go and, and demonstrate his or her skills by creating the task you decide. Um, so this is a three-task test, but let me just show you what a task looks like. Um, that's what you're going to have with these tests. Is there's going to be one, one main test, and there's going to be composed of all these different Linux tasks. A relatively simple one, we're just asking the candidate to extract a file verify uh, that it contains uh, you know, this, this, this specific image. Not a particularly difficult task, but you know, maybe someone that's not familiar with Linux uh, may not be able to do it. And if you're looking for a DevOps position, um, it's critical to make sure that they have the essential basic skills before you, know, you, you, you use engineer's time and uh, bring them on for an on-site just to make sure that they, they have the skills that they say they do. Um, so this is the setup. So this is going to be run the moment they get into the server. Um, so as I said before, you can install tools, you can set up directory structure, how you want to set it up. Um, and then after the task is done, you can say, you write a check script that will essentially confirm that the kid did it correctly. And if you want to, you could, you could have an example solution. So you could have an example solution to solve the task, um, clean up if you want to, uh, to mess the stuff that was created after that task. Um, and that the candidate does get the score. So if you imagine you can create as many tasks as you want. And 10 tasks, you're going to get candidates with varying performance all over the board in terms of how they do on these tests. So if someone gets a perfect score and is able to do all the tasks, you, you, you have a candidate on your hand that has quality. And if you want to spend time uh, with the candidate uh, before, like on site, and you can test beforehand before actually investing time in your engineers so you can filter out those that don't have the skills. Um, so this is just one task, um, and like I said before, you know, each each task is going to have multiple tasks. I'll see what this looks like in the candidate's perspective. So at the end, again, you'll see at the, he or she will see at the top, you know, the whole score that's left in the session, uh, your logo here, and then we'll see on the left a, a simple task description. Again, this is all up to you. So what message you want to put? But um, the candidate the option. So if the candidate's more comfortable doing server or systems admin stuff through the terminal here can log into this instance of, of Ubuntu and be able to complete challenges uh, through that terminal. Or you get to the web shell. And I'm, I'll just demonstrate it from the web shell side. Automatically log the candidate in. And the candidate start working on the tasks over here. So I, I see my first task is to extract this file. You know, maybe a candidate, I could, I could be in here, I could you know, see how the set up. I see I, I already, there's, there's a chef file in here. I, uh, I could start creating some files. I could say um, sample files and extract the, this part of the challenge. And what's cool about this is we're, when it's actually done doing all this, uh, you record everything that the candidate's doing. So the report, and I'll show you that later, uh, we're actually taking record of every command the candidate used to solve a particular challenge. It's the automatic grading on the back. So, candidate maybe does the challenges correctly, but you want to take a deeper dive and look at uh, candidate approach to the challenge. 
that, that report will always be there for your team to look at and reference later. So it's a complete catalog history of how the candidate approached the challenge. Uh, this is especially for those, um, those of the script assessments where you may not always have someone there to do the challenge. And with this, the candidate do the challenge on his or her own, and you can read later. So if you have a large quality quantity of candidates and you want to quickly identify who has skills, um, this way to do that. Um, maybe advance those that did really well forward. Um, you know, I actually completed this challenge. Um, essentially, go back to this for the bond. There's also submit. I could say with the test, and then it completes the test. Your recruiting team or your engineering team can receive a notification um, saying that the test was completed, uh, and it's going to be auto scored based on you know those those scripts I showed, um, and you actually review those with your team. team. We can see here that for this particular challenge, we had 28 candidates that completed it. As a challenge, they automatically receive a score. And, uh, you know, a lot of these candidates, you can, you can assign the score how you want it to be assigned. But essentially, I've decided it because that's going to be a perfect score, right? So we have we had a, a, a that maximum score was 10. And quickly identify those at the top uh, really well, right? We can actually see that, you know, the candidates got all the challenges right. They were talkers. Maybe we want to spend additional time with them. But I and I, I think this is where a lot of value can be derived is identify those that maybe aren't ready for this kind of position. So you don't necessarily need to bring them on site to have to have them do an interview with one of your engineers because they don't have the baseline skills that you're looking for. Um, so the here is really twofold. So also it, it will help you accelerate your candidates that you have through the pipeline so you can get them hired faster. But on the side, allow you to, send, to save your recruiters time on candidates that may not be ready to do a particular job. And you can create whatever challenges or tasks you want to make. Um, so those, those tasks are really tailored to your specific job role. Um, let me look at this particular report. So if we look at John's report, he did, he did excellent on this particular assessment. Um, we look at his candidate profile. So we have a complete list of John and everything he's done around HackerRank. So he did, you know, certain different challenges, you know, he attempted these. Um, but look at this rank challenge. So we're going to get a detailed report that your entire team is able to look at. So you can see the candidate feedback that they left after the test. Um, you can look at the performance on the test. And we can see here that, you know, the kid had this one task to complete. Uh, the check log, so for every task you assign the candidate, this check log essentially uh, tells you that you're on a different task you assign the candidate, and then we have the download. So you can download the kids approaching the challenge, so the entire bash command history, and the complete session recording files. And what 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 the session recording files is actually play them again in the ter terminal, and it'll essentially give you the recording of that terminal session that the candidate did. Uh, so you can review it just as if you were sitting there right there with the candidate uh, doing the challenge. And then lastly, we have the timeline where you can see where the time was spent during that. So we can see, you know, he viewed the question listing, he went to question one, and then he, he stayed was offline. Uh, so for everyone, we're recording, you know, whether the connection was there. So if a candidate says, hey, I actually disconnected, you can actually confirm that. And time to the candidate's test, if it's actually about claim, or if it's a claim, you can say, uh, you, were, you were working on question one the entire time. Uh, you know, this question was not meant to be that difficult. You know, why did it take you 60 minutes to do question one? Um, this is adding another dimension to, you know, your assessment. So you can actually see the thought process of the candidate as the challenge was being taken. Again. All right, to so show you around pseudo rank. Um, and the last thing, for every candidate that takes this particular challenge, um, you can share the candidate reports with other team members. You can download them as PDFs, download them as Excel, so you have all that data available for you, available for you to share with your team and your catalog. So um, there's been a lot that's always here for you to reference. So anytime you know Ted does one of these, um, always reference that report, always reference that score. Um, so I'm back and wrap up here. That hacker rank for work, and in particular pseudo rank, is really a three-step process. 
at one end, it's really the sourcing, right? So what you can do is you can actually embed challenges um, on site. So you can you can say something along the lines of, you know, want to increase your chances of getting hired for like a DevOps position? Click here to Linux challenge or something like that, and have a link directly to this challenge. And then the candidate does well in the challenge, you can accelerate that candidate through the hiring process. Um, so you vetted them with the challenge. So that's a huge benefit. Um, the thing is screening. So like I said before, we're stack ranking all candidates that are coming in here completing these challenges. Um, you can spend time on the candidates that have the skills and less time on, on those that necessarily maybe aren't the particular job. And then lastly, hire, right? So hire is the most important. The second are going to increase the chances that you're going to hire a candidate that actually has the skills and reduce your chances of having a candidate that, you know, maybe inflated their resume. Um, skills-based assessments are going to get straight to the point and be able to show you if it has the skills or not. All right, so uh, I wanted to open it up for questions. Uh, anyone has questions for either myself or, or Tom? Uh, let's open that up. Uh, a few people have actually chimed in. If you have a question, just type it in. You can type it to everyone or you can type it to us directly. Uh, we've had you come in during the presentation. Uh, first question was, uh, can you confirm that the pseudo rank will, uh, will auto-score its scripting code challenges? Uh, and definitely true. Um, pseudo rank, uh, when you, so basically when you define the question, uh, we'll also define um, like the expected output. Um, and once your candidate submits their submission, uh, we'll check their output versus expected output. Um, so we do auto score. Uh, and if you want to dive deeper into how long they took or you know the exact command lines they did, uh, if you want to dive deeper into their answer, then you would just go to the to the view detailed report. You could either watch the reporting or view the and history. Um, Another another question, good question. Um, what's the max number of tasks that I can add to a pseudo rank challenge? I'll pass that to Chris. Sure. So you can create as many pseudo rank challenges as you want. And we don't cap you on that. So if you want to have a, a challenge where you essentially gave a candidate, you know, 100 tasks to do, I'm not necessarily recommending that, but we don't, we don't cap you on the number of tasks that you assign the candidate. And again, every task can be auto graded. So you, can have quick, so you can quickly identify candidates based on performance. Awesome. Okay, another question. Can I choose any OS I want? Um, I'm just the marketing guy, so I will also pass to Chris, our technical guru. Right. So by default, uh, we have a unique instance of Ubuntu for candidates to do these tasks every time. So each candidate is going to have their own uh, Ubuntu box to work in, but we also support other Linux operating systems. Zora uh, or Red Hat, um, it's a simple start on our end. So if you want to test them on your Red Hat skills, uh, definitely do that. Um, Windows is not, on the, is not currently supported, but we do have uh, Linux operating systems up and running right now. Another kind of technical question, can I create my own server images with a bunch of software preloaded? Right. Uh, so what you can actually do, and, and if you recall back to what I was showing on each, on each challenge, there's something called a setup phase. And that, in that setup phase, while that server is spinning up, you can actually install any packages you want before the server is loaded. So to install Chef, you want to install Puppet, you can do that in the space phase. We're actually creating a unique, unique instance. I mean, that's the, the moment it's ready, the candidate will have all, that, all those tools available from our producer use. So actually creating your own um, server environment through the setup. Um, uh, and then, how much time does it take to spin up an instance? Does that time count against the candidate time limit? Uh, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but again, I was asked to Chris, our resident tutoring expert. Time spent uh, to configure a specific server is going to vary based on how many tools you're installing, right? Um, but it doesn't count against the candidate's time limit. So if you're in the beginning, you know, we really had a, like a, like a pre-test phase where the 30 minutes to, let's say, start the server, and then we do the loading there. Uh, and that does not count against the candidate's time limit. Uh, the time limit that they get is, is specified on the platform. So the challenge I showed earlier, they had 45 minutes um, if the server was up and running. Um, next question, do you have any method suggestions to keep people from relying too heavily on Google by screen caps of their desktop? Um, I'll pass them to Chris as well. 
Right. So, I, you know, when it comes to something like, uh, and I think the question might become something like plagiarism, right? Like you don't want people referencing the internet. I want to see their raw skills. Um, so we don't actually like uh, screen capture their desktop. Um, what we record is the, the terminal session. So if you wanted to play back exactly how the candidate was approaching a particular task, like if he was completely down the wrong path and then all of a sudden there was inspiration, and, um, you know, record all of that. But I think, you know, Google is an important part of like a server admins or a system admins toolkit, right? Being able to look at a task and then quickly be able to um, write solution. So if, if the candidate is resourceful enough to find the answer appropriate on Google that matches the challenge, I think that's a good candidate there. Um, but, but, but again, we do record um, everything so you can use it later if you want to. Awesome questions. Uh, definitely appreciate it. And we'll keep more keep coming in. Um, is there a suggestion for launching multiple instances to accomplish multiple tests on a one-on-one -on -one basis versus multiple tests on a server launch? So let me dive into this question. Um, so essentially, is, is, which are, are taking the pseudo rank tech, pseudo rank challenge? We spin up a new instance based on your setup scripts. Uh, those tools and installed. Starting multiple instances, these instances are completely isolated from each other. So what we do is we actually block. Um, it's kind of a technical answer. We block inbound requests to um, the instance or the, the Ubuntu uh, instance that we've created for it. But the candidate has full access to, to access, you know, online packages. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to download Chef and you didn't have them do that already, um, they can definitely do that. Um, but it's just one test to one instance. Also, ask questions similar to like security restrictions on the user account. Now. Uh, root access sandbox hopefully answers everyone's questions who asked about that. So again, uh, each user basically gets root access to their own instance, and that instance does not interact with uh, other instances anywhere right. else. Um, and then, uh, is Ubuntu the only supported Linux OS at this point? Uh, I this earlier. Currently, we support um, we do support flavors of. of Next, so we do have uh, you know Fedora, Red Hat, and Ubuntu. So if you test on different operating systems, you can. But by default, um, Ubuntu is a pretty a pretty solid, and pretty compact platform. I can do a lot of the tests. So we we have that as the default operating system. But it, we can change it on the back end if you wanted to test something else. Um, do the instances have access to the net, so the candidate could connect to other machines? do is, uh, uh, so the, it's basically we, we spin up a little box for the candidate to do these challenges in. And it's like an Ubuntu or an operating system box, the candidate can do these challenges. Um, actually allow them to make outgoing requests to the internet um, and SSH to another machine if they wanted to. But again, that's all recorded. What we do block are requests from the outside trying to get into the candidate's box. So um, we're, very, we're a very tight shop here. I mean, all, all of our server images are managed through AWS. Um, so they're all here, and they abide by all of Amazon's rule set. Um, incredibly reliable. So if you get a lot of traffic, you have a lot of candidates taking these challenges. We scale automatically, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, it's, it's very secure. We keep them locked down pretty tight um, from its perspective. And then, so another question: Do you have predefined tests, so we don't need to create our own? We do some predefined tests, and we're adding more uh, every day, actually. Uh, but We've gotten a lot of feedback that people actually do typically want to create their own tests, at least for the uh, the more in-depth screening and like interview phases. Uh, so most people rely on the built-in stuff, or, like the career page, kind of like the basic thing. But a lot of people have expressed an interest in creating their own. So you can do both. And like I said, we are adding uh, more student run challenges pretty much day. Okay. Um, actually show that on the WebEx. Um, the challenge that Chris did was, I believe, a built-in challenge. So that would technically be there as a starter challenge for anyone to do. Uh, and we do have, uh, obviously, uh, like the, the built-in library that you'd be able to like search through and pay tests from. Uh, so uh, examples. Um, so add to that question as well. Um, and when it comes to the, the Linux challenges, really we try to emphasize you know, you can complete freedom to create whatever kind of challenge you want to give the candidate. Um, I'll give you a couple examples to get started. So we can, we can if you sign up for a trial, 
or, or you, you work with, uh, or you end up partnering with us to work on, on the create challenges. We give you a couple to get started, and then it's more about creating your own challenges specific to your uh, roles you're hiring for. So it's a ton of freedom, and we can create like a sandbox to create any kind of test you want. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, this is a very detailed question. Uh, if we want a candidate to be to be like a network connection between two VMs, is it possible to split up two or a with a connection between them? If so, can we configure NATing and firewall rules? Looks like I like an answer to this question. Huh. All right. Uh, let me see, let me think about that in a moment. So, two VMs. Right, so architecture works right now is we have we partner with AWS, so we essentially have one virtual machine that spins up a ton of servers, and basically the resources are, are automatically scaled based on how many candidates are taking the test. Uh, so the firewall rules are actually um, the actual firewall rules on these on these instances are fixed by AWS, right? So we don't want candidates coming in here and attempting to like hack. Um, you know, pseudo rank. But if they if they could do that, that'd be pretty impressive, right? But what you can do is, uh, for example, with like Chef and Puppet, you can actually ask the candidate to create like scripts to configure things. So if you wanted to, to have to demonstrate his or her skills with simply setting up these uh, specific configurations for security, um, you could definitely do that. Um, the thing is, when it comes to actually messing with these instances, we we don't want candidates to be able to you know mess with, mess with the logs or or able to, you know, tamper with these files they're not supposed to be, so we keep it locked down in that regard. Very. Once again, thank you, Chris, for um, bringing all of this knowledge, because I would not have been able to answer um, pretty much any of these <laughs> questions. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, these have been great questions. We'll give everyone, a, you know, maybe like 30 uh, for your, your questions, where do you find them? Um, they're just in, in the, the library, right? So, Sudorank is, uh, is is a new offering. Sudorank's been on the market for about, you know, we've been working with different companies trying to make this as robust as possible. Um, we have a, a couple of questions right now already created. Um, and it's, it's, it's more like a one-off basis. So, what you can do is you can actually email support and copy over those example questions to get you started. But it's more about, uh, we can actually onboard you. So, if you actually decide to go with us, we'll, we'll walk you through the entire process of, of using uh, I have to rank for work around pseudo rank, so if there's any questions there. Um, but there are a couple of questions that we do have that we can share. So if, if you have an account and you want to see some example questions, uh, just shoot us an email. Awesome. I think we have the questions. So thank you, everyone. That was definitely a lively Q&A. Uh, we appreciate everyone's questions and attention. Um, thank you again for uh, getting out. Right now. We hope it was helpful. Uh, if you have other questions, you can certainly feel free to ask myself or uh, Chris. Uh, you can call us the number as well. Um, so uh, start a free trial at hackerank.com slash work slash pseudo rank. Uh, once again, thanks everyone for attending. We hope it was informative. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care. Thank you.